I've been uh, talking to a few people. <clears throat> the only thing I think they're having difficulty, I'm not the only thing, one thing they're having difficulty is with doing the Zoom classes and the live classes at the same time. Um, it, sounded, it sounded easy, but it's, it's not working out. Um, so yeah. if they plan to keep doing Zoom, I think they're gonna have to do separate Zoom classes at a different time and spend their live energy on the live classes. So. I, uh, I, so we, one of the things we talked about the other day was uh, not, uh, you know, making broad, broad um, decisions. When are you, are you, record, are you gonna record? Yes. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. I just, I, I didn't want to, I didn't know we were, uh, you know, we talked, we talked about making broad, you know, being broad instead of specific. And uh, fortunately, even though I was planning on it, I hadn't said anything to my people about doing both of them at the same time. And, uh, you know, as we got closer and closer, I'm like, man, this is going to be complicated. And I don't think I'm going to do a good job, especially for those Zoom kids. I think it's going to be you know, like, like we had our very first martial arts class yesterday. Of course, it was all, all, all it was black belts and red belts. Like, that's it. Like, it was, it was five kids, and it was all the kids who were going to come no matter what. Like, hey, great to be back, Mr. William. But, uh, I mean, like, I think about the stuff that we did in class because I, I, I didn't even open our curriculum. I just wanted to see what it felt like. It was a brand new place and coronavirus. And, like, and we, I mean, with the movement that we did, and then I thought, wait, 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 I can't, I, I, I literally, I had a pad and I was like, all right, great. Line up behind me. Oh, actually like something. And, and what do I do? I'm like, get, it, get over here. I want you packed in like quick, quick, quick. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wait, I don't want you packed in. Right. Uh, and so I, you know, I had them, I put their hands out and I had them. And then we did these like big rotations of like, okay, now you're doing your sidekick and now run to the back of the line, but the back of the line's way the heck over there. And it's like, how, how would those zoom kids have even done that? You know, when would they have kicked? Do they kick every time I say kick? So I'm glad that we didn't do that. And I would say that we lost when I announced that, hey, we're having in-person classes. We are not going to be able to continue the Zoom classes. I said something like, at least for now, I think we lost seven or eight people. But we had people reactivate who the Zoom classes weren't working for. We had plenty of people, that, like I'm sure if we're being honest with you, we had plenty of people who quit because zoom wasn't working they're like look my kid don't want to do zoom i don't want to do zoom call us when you reopen you know and so we gained three or four people i think it was a net loss of like maybe two or three people total um but now we can just teach in person uh, and then if we get good at that then maybe we can add zoom classes back in and i was actually just having this conversation with my wife i was kind of you know we all feel that pressure like you start getting emails and you start feeling pressure and, and, and you're like, oh, maybe everybody feels like this. And like, can't believe you're not having Zoom classes. In person just doesn't work. You're a monster. And they, they didn't say that. But like, and I'm like, ah. Oh. And I told my wife, I was like, we were in the kitchen. And I was like, maybe we should just do the Zoom classes too. And then I was like, wait, no, no. It needs to be counterintuitive. Like, we will not do the Zoom classes now. And we will add them in later if and when it's needed. We don't know what coronavirus is going to be like. If if coronavirus is going to be here for another two years, well, sure, we might need Zoom classes, but let's give it a while to figure that out. Uh, may, what, what if it's cured tomorrow? Like, so it was, you know, not a great decision, but, or not an easy decision, but I think it was the right one, at least for us. I was talking to Charles Jarnigan. He's been doing really good. He's got 228 students. Um, he probably had 235 when all this started. Uh, the city came and said he could reopen uh, starting yesterday, but he could only have 10 people per class. Then they called him yesterday and go, in two, in, uh, next week you can go back to normal. So I oh, said, nice. I said, it's really hard to plan because he's been planning summer camp with 10 people, this and this and this. And a week yep. later he goes, okay, do whatever you want. Yep. Uh, yep. But well, yesterday he used to have like 30 people per class. He had three go up yesterday for live classes. That's great. Yeah. See, and that's, that's one of the things that I think that, um, may, like if you're used to making bigger moves and you're used to planning bigger things, like, like, like really reaching out and putting yourself out there in terms of making, trying to make decisions that are not comfortable for you. Once you do that enough, you start to realize that sometimes you can't, you, you have a vision of what it's going to be like, but you don't know what it's going to work out like, like, yeah, we kept enrolling summer campers. And, and people, like, we, we caught a little bit of crap about it because they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, we fortunately reopened 
reopened right before summer camp started. So we were okay. We also had people say, well, how are you going to manage social distancing in summer camp? And we straight up said, we can't, we can't, it's kids. They're going to be all over each other. Now here's what we do. We have no touching rules. We have rotation. Here's how we do it all. But like we, we just had to plan and then hope that it worked out. And then if it didn't work out, we, we adjust that plan as we go along. But what I certainly don't want to do, like we, in fact, I did a, a an after school tour uh, for a family who's scheduled for yesterday and they did enroll for after school, but we haven't heard from the school district whether or not we're going to have school. And they even told us, they said, um, <laughs> Thanks, lady, that we were your last choice. But they said we went everywhere else, and they're not—they're not enrolling. <laughs> okay, great. But uh, uh, we're, we're the last choice for a lot of parents because we're thirty or forty percent more expensive than uh, some of the other places. But she said uh, a couple of our biggest competitors are not even have decided they're not even going to do pickup for after school. It's hmm. too small of a portion of their business, and they've just decided not to do it. And it said, but the school district hasn't said, they're like, well, maybe we'll go two days. Maybe we'll go every other day. Maybe we won't do anything. We'll let you know by July 31st. Are you serious? Our parents have to plan, you know? So it is really a chance. So what we're doing is we're just plant. We're just enrolling with the caveat of, hey, look, ma'am, look, sir, we, this may not work out. You know, we're just going to have to make a plan as we go along. But um, maybe that's, it's hard. It's hard to plan. I think exactly because, I think what we're going to do down here in Florida every other day. So yeah. they're going to do Zoom. I mean, this is a regular elementary school. They're going to do Zoom a couple times a week, and they're going to go to school a couple times a week. So well, and you got to think, like, what could you, if you were an after-school facility, what would you do with that? Like, like let's say that, that Oak State, here, here's what I would do. If State of Oklahoma said tomorrow, school is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in-person, Tuesday, Thursday, Zoom, I would immediately figure out how we could facilitate kids on Tuesday, Thursday, Zoom? Because you, you think mom's getting off Tuesday, Thursday for Zoom? Like, no, you know, that's, that puts huge pressure on families. So how can we, how can we solve that, right? How can we be part of the solution for those families is we would do pick up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we would do day camp Tuesday, Thursday. We would say, hey, moms and dads, sorry, we got to go from $400 a month to $500 a month. I'm sorry, but that has to happen because we're going to have to buy a wall full of computers. We're going to have to train our people on how to do your stuff, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then we would make that plan and we might not enroll anybody. We might have a bunch of parents that say, Hey, look, we're not even going to do after school because that's too much of a hassle. 500 bucks a month. I might as well just have grandma do it or whatever. Like, but, but we can't not make it, we can't be frozen with inaction, you know? Um, and that's, that's one of the things we've been, like making, uh, I see a lot of people with the idea of, maybe I could change my pricing structure. Maybe I could get rid of this class that I hate on Friday nights at 9.30 p.m. or whatever it is. Like, absolutely. Now is it, no, and here's the, here's the thing that, that like, people don't want to admit. If, they, if I think if every martial arts school owner internalized this, they would be free, is that nobody cares about you. Right? No, nobody is thinking about what Mr. Smith or Mrs. Sally or whatever is doing with their martial arts business. You're going to make one person mad. Nobody else is going to open the email and things are just going to go on. You know what I mean? And it's like, like, and I see so many people talking about like, well, maybe this is the opportunity that I could use to increase my little ninjas pricing up to regular pricing. Absolutely. Or maybe this is the time to go from 99 to 109 or to 119. Absolutely. You know, now is the time to change your class structure. We, I saw some people say, well, maybe now I could, I've been wanting to institute a, uh, an upgrade program forever. Maybe now I do it. Yeah. And all the people that stuck with you get the little coronavirus patch and they get free upgrades. Right. And so now when you start enrolling new students, it's like, no, you can't have the, the coronavirus patch because you weren't here for that, but you can have the blue collar or whatever, but you need to wait a little while. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll let you know when you're ready for that. Of course, absolutely. You guys should take this opportunity to change anything and everything you want to about your business. Like we moved, right? <laughs> we completely moved. So, uh, yeah, take advantage of it. You know, working with a guy in uh, Pennsylvania and he just wants to go to rotating curriculum. And since the students have been out for three months, perfect time to come back. And what are we doing? Well, we're doing this now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and half of them have forgotten. Like I had a, uh, we have a summer camper this year all the time. I can't even remember what her name was. Somebody this morning said, uh, a parent as they were signing their summer camper and said, now parkour starts today. Right. And I was like, yes. And the kid goes, Oh, I think I've forgotten everything. 
You know, it's like, and they've been here for a long time, but they haven't done it for so long. It's like, they, they're going to forget what it was like before. They're going to remember your energy, your passion, how much you care, uh, you know, and, and it, it, you have to make those decisions that are right for you. And there is never, there's never going to be another time when you, you're asked to shut down your business so that you can make a lot of changes that you've always wanted to make. <laughs> you know, look at the bright side. With all the kids home, I was reading someplace that the average kid has gained, like, it was probably adults too, five pounds in the last three months. Yeah. Oh, today, they've known kids have gained 15 pounds in three months. So you think there's, there's another opportunity that's the schedule. All the kids home doing anything, and parents always yeah. worry about the health of their kids. They're staying home not to get the virus, but they're getting unhealthy at the same time because they're getting overweight. So... Well, and if, you're ta- and if you're talking about like enrollments and levers to, to figure out how to get people back enrolled and, and how to communicate with that, you know, you got to think like if, if, if you are, let's say you're like, oh my God, we have got to get, okay, we're reopen with our state. And I say that like this because not everybody thinks that you should be reopen or you whatever, right? And, and you've got this boulder of I've got to get 10 or 20 students back so that we can start breaking even again. And like... I always picture the, uh, I, th- I think it was a, a, a math teacher at some point who said, was, was described, a physics teacher or something, describing like a lever, right? You have a boulder and, and you put the little fulcrum here and you pull and the longer the lever is, the heavier an item that you can push with less energy. And, uh, and that always stuck with me. Like, of course, everybody understands that concept, but it's like, okay, so I got to get these students, right? Think of them as one, one group of re-enrollment numbers that I got to hit. And hey, we're reopen is like, okay, three or four people are going to be like, neat, we got to get out of this house, right? Hey, we're reopen and your kid can finally uh, socially interact with people. Hey, your kid needs to lose weight. Hey, you need to lose weight. Like what are all these reasons you can pile on this board to try to get that boulder up? Um, if, if all you do is send an email that says we're reopen, don't, don't be surprised when you didn't lengthen your, your, your stick to get that boulder out, get that, get that stick longer and put the, put the pressure all the way on the end of it as, as much as you can, um, you know, or don't and fix all the things you need to first before you re-enroll, you know, use your current students as guinea pigs on that rotating curriculum. Um, I, I, I've done a lot of pre-selling of things that didn't work out because I didn't have it all worked out. You know, I didn't have it like, like this, the service delivery is, is just as important. What do they say? Like if you have a, a bad hamburger, the best way to ruin a hamburger place is good marketing or whatever, you know, like marketing, if you, if you're not able to deliver that service, I think take, take the time to do that, you know? Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't think that, uh, I think I, I'm surprised that people are still so nervous to make changes when there's literally nobody in their building, you know? They're going to have to. So when you talk about those 20 students, people are going to need that. Because um, what happens is everyone's in the negative now. And now you're going to reopen, so you have more expenses. There's only so long you can be in the negative. Yep. If they're not coming back for regular martial arts, just like you said, with your lever, you still need people in the door. So if that's coming up with a fitness program for the kids, um, kick and fit like Chris Gassamas was doing was a great program, short program. You can get people in for something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, so, so, and, and your, your limit is going to be your imagination. Uh, why can't you run? You think that parents wouldn't, would, let, let's, let's say that, uh, what do parents want? Of course they want their kids socializing. What do parents also want? Their kids to not bring coronavirus home, Right. So if I can make sure that both of those things happen uh, or, or minimize risk, and like we talked about this last time, I don't say prevent. I say minimize risk as much as possible. Why couldn't I have, now I won't do this, but you could. Uh, what, what, why not have a parent's night out where I'm only like, look, there are only 10 spaces and your kid is literally going to have a square and we're going to do fun games inside this square and we're going to watch a movie and we're going to eat popcorn and pizza and your kid can't leave the square unless they need to go to the bathroom or something, but at least they get to hang out in a place other than your living. You think you wouldn't be able to get 10 people? Yep. You know, I, I know that if I, I don't want to run it. I know that if I sent that email, I'd have 10 people in a heartbeat. Uh, and, and like, what, what I wouldn't like 
50 bucks times 10, 500 bucks for a Friday night. Charles Jarnigan was saying his summer camp this summer is easier than ever before because kids just want to socialize. They just want to come in and talk to the kids. They haven't done it in three months. He goes, it's been really easy this year. And yep. I go, are you doing parents' side outs? He goes, my team's too tired, but we should be doing them. Yep. Uh, you probably can do a parents' side out every single weekend, just like you said. Um, there's only so many income generators. So yep. since you're not getting all your uh, revenue each month, you have to figure retail. People buying stuff all over the place. Oh man, okay. As long as it as long as it'll open, that's fine. So, I'm sorry. That's the only way to get a key. That that's fine. Shit. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. All right. Give me a second. Okay. What's up? Yeah. 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 Give me a second, guys. <laughs> While it was gone, uh, I, again, I was talking about the income generators. Um, during this whole thing, get on Facebook. Anytime something comes up with phishing, I seem to buy it. Amazon's got to be delivering to my house every other day. Um, so it's the same thing with your retail. People can still buy retail, even though they may not be coming into the school. They're still going to buy retail, that they, things that they could train at home. Still want to do T-shirts, hats. It's coming towards summertime. Kids are going to go outside. So they must, or they might as well buy things that are related to your school. So using your profit generators on Rainmaker to sell retail is a great idea. Uh, the parents signed out. Any type of income generator, income uh, generator that you can think of is really important to bring in since you have less paying students making their monthly payments. And you've got less people coming in. And again, just to recap what was William was saying. And now's the time to expand your market. So if you've just been doing kids' classes, maybe you want to add in now fitness classes for adults. If you've uh, been going more on adult classes or BJJ, well, now's the time to do a kids' curriculum, even if it's just for fitness, because kids are getting out of shape um, when they're just uh, sitting home and raiding the refrigerator and sitting on their computer, things like that. So it's really important to find out what people really need and start adding to that to your repertoire of what you're offering in your school. So this is a Williams new school. He just moved here, I think, probably a week and a half ago. So I haven't even got a tour myself, but uh, it looks like he's got he's got a lot of room for his uh, after school, his summer camp, his parkour. He still has a small uh, martial arts uh, program going within the school. So maybe when he comes back, we can have him do a little tour of this. If you are watching this and you're doing something to get new students that we didn't talk about, please comment so when I post a video, come, hey, we're doing this, it's worked out really good. Uh, we already talked about trying to do hybrid classes. The hybrid classes, when you're doing a live class, at the same time you're doing your live classes, you're doing the Zoom. I thought that was a great idea. Uh, I thought it would be brilliant to have competition between the hybrid kids and your regular students. I thought that would add a lot of fun. But schools that have tried that to tell me that they're having a hard time. It's really hard to engage totally with the Zoom kids when you have the live kids. So several schools I talked to are doing separate times. They're doing a morning Zoom class and afternoon Zoom classes. And then they're doing their regular evening live classes. So. Getting in a Zoom-only class may be the way to go. Um, not everyone's coming back, even though schools are opening. Uh, not a lot of schools are seeing the majority of the school students coming back. Uh, the majority of students are still staying home, being connected with Zoom. Uh, we don't know how long that's going to last. It's going to last until parents feel comfortable. And with everything that's going on in the news, fake news, good news, whatever, um, people just don't know what to think. They're thinking one thing one day, and they're changing the mind two days later. So what that means is we have two types of students that we have to provide for if we want to keep them active and paying. Uh, so we have our active live students, and we have our active Zoom uh, students. We have to make sure they have the best possible experience ever. So here we are, I think it's... Uh, 11:20 in Tulsa. It looks like uh, William's got some kids coming in from his summer camp. He started summer camp a couple weeks ago. Uh, obviously, these kids are social distancing, which is a lot hard to do. I think we do when we're doing summer camp. 
actually going to be around each other, so it's really hard to keep that six foot difference. Oh, here it comes. And uh, everything, everything got crazy. Sorry, everybody showed up at once, and all the summer campers and everything else. I just talked about some stuff by you. All right, I think. <laughs> I think we might have to call this early, guys. I'm sorry. The only other thing that I wanted to say was uh, please uh, uh, pay, watch out for – so on Thursday I'm going to do uh, a couple of things, that you, like things you should be utilizing in Rainmaker to make some of these changes. And then on Friday I'm going to go down to Rainmaker. And uh, I told them, look, there's a lot of new stuff that I don't know about. I need somebody to, I need somebody to walk me through. What's all the new stuff that people need to know about? So – Unlock, uh, if it's plugged in here, otherwise, otherwise stick something in the door. Um, uh, I'm going to go down to Rainmaker on Friday. And I said, look, Scott, sit, sit, sit somebody down with me because there's a little, you're posting all this stuff and people are asking me, Hey, what's going on? So what's new? So uh, I'm going to try to uh, finagle some stuff out of Scott so that we can all know what's going on. Well, purple's in. From what I, yeah, exactly. I, I like it. I, I like it. I like it's it. Cool. All right, cool. Thank you, sir. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. Thanks.